Hi and welcome to another video in my Photoshop Essential Skills series. Everything you need to know to get you well and truly started on your journey of discovery with Photoshop. In this video we're going to be looking at smart guides to help us align objects easily and quickly. Now don't forget if you're a fan of the printed page there is a free ebook to accompany the video. Just click on the link in the more section under the video to download it. OK then, let's dig in. OK, what are we going to learn in this video? Well, firstly, we're going to learn how to turn the smart guides on or off. They're normally on by default. Second thing, we're going to show and hide the rulers. Number three, we're going to identify the HUD or the heads up display. And number four, we're going to align objects using the smart guides. Lots to do, let's get stuck in. Now one area where Photoshop has, has progressed a lot in recent versions is in the design area. Now I love things that make my job easier. And smart guides certainly do. Now let's illustrate this by first creating a new document. Now I'm going to do that by, if I go up to the file and I can select new or I can use the keyboard shortcut control and N or command and N on a Mac. Now that's going to bring up me new document dialog box. And here I'm going to create a new document. I'll make this, I'll change it to inches to make it easier for me inches and I'll say I'm going to make it 5 inches by 5 inches and I'll leave everything else set to default and I'll click create. Now there we've got our 5 by 5 little square. Now turning the guides on and off, well if I go to the view menu and down to show We'll see here, whoops, we'll see here that smart guides are turned on by default. But if for some reason they weren't, or they were then all you've got to do is go to view, show, and smart guides, and they will be activated, they'll be turned on. Now the ruler tool, well, this is up here on the top and on the left hand side. And if it isn't there, then again if we go to the view menu and rulers, if I just turn that off, you'll see that the rulers disappear. If I want them back again, I can go to the View menu and Rulers or use the keyboard shortcut of Control and R. And that brings the rulers back. Now if I want to change the units of the rulers, then I put my mouse up in one of the rulers and right click. And here I've got the choice, pixels, inches, centimeters, etc. Well, I'm quite happy at the moment with pixels. So I'm going to leave it set to that. I'm just going to press Ctrl and Plus just to zoom it in a little bit so I can see it a bit better. And I'm going to start things off by creating, um, say, a square shape. So I'm going to go down and select the Shape tool. And I'm going to choose the Rectangle tool. Now up in the Tool Options bar here, I want the Fill to be black. And I don't want a stroke on, although it doesn't really matter as long as it, if it's black or white you won't see it anyway. OK, and then I'm going to come into my document and I'm going to click and drag. But at the same time, I'm going to hold the shift key down because I want this to be constrained to a square. And then I'm going to let go. And there we have. We've got our rectangle. And if you look over in the uh, layers panel, you can see we've got it on a separate layer now. Now I need the move tool selecting so I can either mouse on over and click on it or I can just press V on the keyboard to select the Move tool. And I want to make sure that my Auto Select is ticked and that it's set to Layer. And then that'll allow me to drag from whichever layer that I happen to be hovering over the top of. Now I'm going to go into the image and I'm going to click on the black rectangle. And as I click and drag it, you'll see that there's, there's some little numbers. And there we've got 8 pixel, 10 pixel. And this is the HUD. This is the heads up display. This is giving me information. And what it's giving me is information of how far I am away from the zero point. Now the zero point here, you can see we've got zero and we've got zero. And the zero point is the, is the edge of the document bounds. 
Um, as I move that around, you'll see that'll change. And we've got the left hand and we've got an up or we've got a down, depending on which way we're going. So here we can see we've got 22 pixels and we've got an eight pixel, but that's the heads up display. That's giving you access to some information. Now, as I drag this around, if you watch closely, you'll see little pink lines appearing and then disappearing. And these are your smart guides. And here I'm just trying to find, I want to put it in the center. So I know, well, that's the center vertically and I can move it down a little bit and I'll find the center horizontally. There we go. Now, if I just move away from the object and I hold the control key down or the command key on the Mac, you'll see that it automatically calculates exactly how many pixels or whatever units you've got your ruler set for is away from the edge of the document. So I'm 82 pixels away from the top, 81 from that side, 180 from the bottom and 181 from that side there. And if I press the arrow keys while I've still got the control key down, you can see I can move the object around one pixel at a time, up and down, and it automatically recalculates on the fly. Now, how cool is that? Now, OK, if that wasn't great enough, there's more. Now, let's duplicate the object. Now, I can do that by holding the Alt key or the Option key if you're on a Mac and dragging the object. And I can drag it down and you can see that it gives me some guides to work to so I can line it up. That's banging the center and it's telling me how many pixels I've got in between. And I'm happy with 10. I think we'll leave it at 10. Just leave it there. Now, if I decided that 10 wasn't enough, then I can again hold the control key down and hover over the objects until I find the, the distance of 10 pixels there. And then with my arrow keys, I can make that bigger. So I can say, well, let's take it to 15. 15 pixels, I think, will look nice as a grid. And again, if I'm holding the control key down and I move away, this tells me exactly where that object is in relation to the document. And if I select that layer, it'll tell me exactly where that one is in relation to the document again. So, OK, let's make another copy. So I'm going to click on that layer again and I'll use Alt and I'll drag. And again, you can see I've got even more guides coming to tell me exactly where I need to be. Now, I'm just going to leave that. I know that's perfectly lined up because of those pink guides and I'll let that go. But it was 14 pixels. So if I hold my control key down again and hover over this one, I see I've got now 14 pixels. And I can now bump that up to 15 with the right arrow key just by doing one like that. Perfect. Now I'm going to duplicate it again. Hold the Alt key or Option key down and click and drag. I know I've got it perfectly lined up there, but it's 16 pixels. But I can now just drag it back and see if I can get it to be 15, 14, 15. And if I can't, then I can use the arrow keys. Now, there we have now a perfectly aligned grid. Now, if I wanted to finish it off, I might want to crop it. So I'm, I can select the crop tool or press C on the keyboard and then just drag this crop in. There's somewhere like that. And we might want a bit of space, a bit more space at the bottom than we've got at the top. And accept it. And that's a perfectly aligned grid now for using in a mask or anything else. So there we have it. You can see that where simple shapes using smart guides allow us to do some pretty cool alignment that in the past we photoshopped pretty limited guides and grids would have taken a long time setting up and moving them around pixel by pixel. So really quick, really easy. And again, they're just on by default. They just work. Well, that's it for this video. I do hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment under the video or share it with a friend or two. Don't forget to check out the more area under the video for the link to any download files or free eBooks. And please click the subscribe button. So when I upload a new video, you are the very first to know. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.